I will present you another robot that we developed at our lab. So that's also where a bit the project is that we present here in the ROS course. Because for this uh, robot, we use the, the Husky base that you already uh, got familiar with uh, in this course. And you extended it to generate a general purpose mobile manipulation platform. So we extended it with an arm and we called this platform manipulator, which is a, which stands for mobile manipulator, where manipulator is our um, robot arm. So how is this platform composed? First, you have the Husky base, which you are already familiar with its VLAN coders and the IMU. And it has already an onboard computer and some battery uh, for autonomous mission. And everything on top, we built by ourselves. So there's, the, there's a box which contains additional computers, additional batteries for operating the arm or also operating additional sensors. We have a lighter sensor. Um, it's a sensor that you already used for the, the ROS bag. So this is the 3D laser <laughs> sensor. We also have a GPS receiver. And um, we have a router. So the robot has its <laughs> own network. And there we have the arm. It's a six stuff arm. It also uses the series elastic actuators, which are used for the leg robot. So it's a compliant arm, which is meant for uh, interaction tasks. Um, <coughs> And at the end effector, which is replaceable, you can have different grippers and cameras. So the, the whole computational and communication setup is very similar to animal. So there are also three computers which are doing the main computation. And on each computer, several nodes are running. They are connected through a, through a wired network. And they are communicating all over us. Of course. So we have the, the navigation PC, which is the onboard PC of Husky, which is responsible for uh, controlling the base, but also for um, processing the point cloud for localization, navigation, and so on. Then we have the, the um, computer responsible for the control of the arm. And on this computer also, um, possible mission can be run. It's important to note that ARM control has also a ROS interface for sending the ARM high-level commands, like uh, desired end effect poses or twists, but the control itself does not uh, run with ROS, um, because there we need a better real-time um, better real-time application. There's also an application computer similar to Animal, where different applications can be run, where camera stream can be processed, also, further processing with point clouds or other sensors can be done. All the critical software is running on board, but through wireless connection, it um, can also broadcast a camera stream, robot information to operate the PC. Um, this is mainly meant for visualizing the state of the robot, but you can also send very high-level commands, or if you need, you can also teleoperate the robot. So what did we build first this platform for? Um, I want I uh, like to show you how um, how we went to a robot competition, the Momat Inside International Robot um, Robot Challenge. <coughs> this is a challenge for showing the current state of the robotics, but also to foster um, foster new development. It's a competition, an international competition, which took place in Abu Dhabi last year, where 25 teams have been selected to show the, the ability of the robots. There were three tasks that had to be fulfilled. First, the first task was landing a drone on a moving um, vehicle. The second task was finding a tool panel, um, navigating there, grasping a tool, and operating with this tool, a valve stem. And the third task was picking and uh, relocating objects with drones. <laughs> so I will focus on the second task, where we used our Husky robot as um, for the for the manipulation task. So how does this task look like? Um, the, the robot is somewhere placed in the field. It has to um, locate the wrench panel somehow. Then it has to navigate to it, um, has to avoid possible obstacles on the way. As soon as it reaches the tool panel, it has to see what tools are there. It has to decide which is the proper one. They can be placed there in a random configuration, and then it has to 
operate a valve stem with this tool. And the focus was to do this really autonomously. So what we wanted to do, we have to, we had to place the robot, press start, and then everything had to run autonomously. Um, for this, we also used a um, state machine, which was starting the different states. So which was starting the exploration of the field, navigation to the range panel, panel detection, manipulation, and so on. The user itself had just a feedback, like the camera stream from the robot, or the point cloud <laughs> that was generated. But the, the state machine took care of switching between the different states and also recovering um, the different states if something goes wrong. Um, one, important, one very important task, of course, was the autonomous navigation. You have already seen that the Husky has an extended command filter, which is fusing the real encoders and the inertia measurement units um, to generate um, a local odometry frame, which gives you the pose of the robot. But this odometry frame can drift over time through to the wheel slippage because it's a skid steer platform, and also because of model inaccuracies. To compensate this, we use a SLAM algorithm, similar simultaneous localization and mapping, which is using the, the scan from the Velodyne LiDAR. This is then fused together with the odometry to get a fixed world frame. So this, fix, uh, this frame is fixed to the world and it doesn't move anymore. We can also feed in GPS information in batch optimization. This is especially helpful if you want to absolutely communicate um, your post to an operator or also to other robots. If you work together with other robots, um, you have to tell them somehow in a global frame where they all can relate where you are. Um, here you can see the map that is reconstructed of the field um, during, uh, using the SLAM algorithm during the competition. At the same time, we could also use the, not only the point cloud for the localization and navigation, but we can also do further processing by using a different node subscribing to the point cloud topic. Here we use the point cloud for detecting where the range panel is located on the field. This is um, done by extracting um, the defined, extracting the, the panel out of the point cloud. And it also has an outlier rejection such that we don't uh, drive to wrong positions. Um, the whole system was designed more or less task agnostic. So we didn't have a special task in mind when we designed the system, but the most specific part was the gripper, which is specific. This one is the only one which is specifically designed to handle the tools. So it has a, uh, a single servo, which is operating a clamp to a rack and pinion mechanism. And it also has a camera. The camera is important because we use it for the visual serving, because the navigation of the base itself is not accurate enough um, for positioning the robot in front of the tools and such that we can manipulate the tools accurately. Um, here I want to show how the, the state machine is using ROS for, um, for starting these different tasks. So as soon as the robot is placed in front of the panel, the state machine starts um, the visual serving and first the valve tracking. We use the valve, we first measure the valve and use it as a reference pose on the, the panel to grasp the, the tools. So the state machine is using an action to start the valve tracking. The valve tracking is subscribing to the image stream from the camera and then publishing the desired um, end effector twist to the controller. We have chosen an action because this gives you feedback from the valve tracking. So if something goes wrong, the state machine knows it can cancel the action and also turns it back to a, uh, to a previous state if necessary and repeat the action. Additionally, the state machine is subscribing to different robot states like um, drive temperature or um, battery state such that it can cancel the mission if uh, some condition is not fulfilled. Um, maybe about the visual serving, so for detecting the valve stem but also the tools on the, the range, we use the trained um, uh, vector machine for detecting the objects on the image. 
Um, similar, uh, similarly to the valve tracking, we used the visual serving for, um, for aligning the camera with the wrenches. And then we could vote which wrench we would like to use. So we were measuring the wrenches um, several times. This was uh, because the wrenches are moving in the wind. So we had to do, take several measurements. Then we could decide which one is the right one for operating the valve. We also use visual observing for guiding the tool to the wrench itself and for the grasping. Um, another essential part, which is or task which is very hard to achieve, is engaging the tool finally with the valve stem. Here we also use visual observing um, to drive the grip to the valve stem, but we also need the feedback from the controller such that we can see that the tool is really engaged with the valve stem. So you can see how the tool finally engages the valve stem. And then the last part was, was the easiest part, just rotating the valve as soon as the tool is engaged. So here you can see a brief summary of the navigation and the manipulation part um, as seen from the robot perspective. So this complete task lasted for about um, a bit more than five minutes. Um, the exploration and navigation of the field took 90 seconds. It was mainly limited because of a limited turning rate of the robot, uh, because it started a bit shaking, because we have, uh, we have put some more mass on a, or we have increased the center of mass of the robot with the arm. So it started a bit shaking if it was turning on spot. Um, most time was spent for visual serving. This is, was because we had to move the arm a bit slowly, such that the visual serving could continuously track um, the different objects on the wrench panel. So as you have seen, we have used this robot for this um, competition. But the goal is to have it um, a general purpose platform where, 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 which we could employ in unstructured environment. And with this platform, we would like to um, manipulate irregular objects, which are previously unknown. unknown. Therefore, we use, um, want to use different gripper, like this underactivated tent, which only has one actuator, but uh, many degrees of freedom. So all the joints are connected through a tendon-based mechanism, and the hand itself adapts to the, to the shape of the object. We also use cameras, or here in this case, uh, depth cameras, for identifying objects which are close to the hand. Here we have a similar clip, gripper, which is an uh, underactuated pneumatic gripper, which can also adapt to the shape of objects. This one we also want to use for the arm. And we also want to use the compliance and the course oh, to use the compliance and the force controllability of the arm for interaction task. Like in this example, where we um, do contact detection and hand guiding without the use of an external force torque sensor, just by the force measurement from the actuators. So. As you could see, there's a, a lot of software similar to what we use on Animal. Um, yeah. Do you have any questions? <laughs>